This video shows an IETF auditor undertaking a part of an IETF 16949 remote audit at a certified client. Watch this video and see if this aspect of the remote audit is undertaken effectively. So, Carl, now I want to follow the audit trail then from the review that we did of customer concerns. I want to follow up on the action uh, you took regarding customer complaint 2021-02, number six. Yeah. Okay. What would you like to see, Paul? Uh, I want to say, I saw the root cause was related to an ineffective process to ensure stock rotation of incoming material, which resulted in out-of-date material being used. Uh, I saw in the complaint that the action uh, that you took was to develop a documented process and relay out the receiving uh, warehouse area. Um, what I would like to try and do is get you to take me to that receiving warehouse, because I think that that looks different to when I was last uh, on site. And if you can show me some of the work you've done, to change the layout of the, the warehouse uh, to, to, to try and get around this problem of out-of-date material. Yeah, that's it, not a problem. I can organise um, Brian to walk us around and explain what we've done. That, that would be great. Okay, so okay. maybe we can take a, a short break now and then uh, I'll join you in a minute then once you're down on the shop floor. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Carl, then. Uh, so I have two particular batches that I want to check in the warehouse. That's batch number 567890 and 567898. Uh, I got these details when I was auditing the procurement process. Um, so I'd like to talk to the warehouse supervisor, if possible, about the new system that you've put in place for first in, first out. Yep. So I've got Brian with me now. He's the warehouse supervisor. I'll just uh, introduce him to you. Brian. Hi. Hello, Brian. Uh, please, please to meet you, Brian. So as part of this IETF forward here, I'm following a trail and I want to have a look at the way that you're storing <laughs> batches 567890 and 567. Seven, eight, nine, eight. They are all the same material type. Could you have a look for me where they are stored within the warehouse? And then maybe could we go into the warehouse and have a look? Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. 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 Um, so if, if when you've found the location, if you can if you can walk me to the location, that would be great. Right, these are the old dispatches of uh, the BO580s packaging. Right, so how, how would you deal with that then? Uh, how would you better use the oldest material first there, given that it's blocked by that packaging? Using the, um, using the tablet, I've figured out that this is uh, the oldest stuff um, that's needing to be consumed first. Due to us having a delivery and stock in front of it, that's ready to, um, to go out, it would take a long time to actually uh, dig this out. So we would, we would have to remove everything out of there, which can uh, cause um, problems with the delivery. Um, there's possible cross contamination where people would actually um, start putting the delivery back into stock. So it's left as it is in situ until that delivery is, is uh, delivered. So what we would then look at is that, what we would look at is packaging that we currently have uh, as well in our racking. So if we've got newer packaging in our racking, we would then not go with FIFO and use that instead because it's easier to get to, so for health and safety reasons, it's, it's better, and also for um, TAM as well, for the factory. Right, and what, what is the reason that the packaging has been put there? Because I saw in your procedure that, you know, you should always better operate first in, first out. It's evident from what I'm seeing that Sometimes, you cannot do that. Um, What's the reason for that? Sometimes packaging can be delivered um, before it's needed uh, and in quantities that they're not consuming in the factory 
uh, fast enough. So we would have to uh, keep it somewhere until we were able to um, put it in the rack and locate it properly. Okay, I understand the problem. So I will, I will be, that gives me concern because what you're showing me is even though you've got the process documented for first in, first out, there are practical reasons why you cannot implement it. So I will follow that up with your procurement team uh, a little bit later in the audit. So no, thank you very much for showing me that. In this part of the remote audit, it's evident that the auditor has done good audit preparation by reviewing in advance of the audit, customer complaints and internal performance data. Based upon that preparation, the auditor has been able to follow audit trails related to a customer complaint caused by a lack of effectiveness of the process to ensure first in, first out. After the initial introductions, the auditor asks the client to take him to the warehouse and show him how the process has changed as a result of the complaint. In doing this, he was able to see that the aisles were blocked with infantry, making it difficult for the revised process to work effectively. The warehouse manager stated that this problem was caused by the suppliers delivering early. With this information now, the auditor can follow audit trails to look at the process of managing infantry levels and hence uh, making sure that they can comply with their first in, first out policy. To undertake an effective remote audit, it is essential that the auditor does good audit preparation, which can include a review of external performance data and also the internal performance of the organization. To undertake an effective remote audit, it's essential that the auditor has a pre-meeting with the auditee to check the methods of communication especially the ability to see the shop floor processes, in this case, the material storage. Just as for an on-site audit, in a remote audit, the auditor should follow audit trails based around the information collected in the audit preparation. And by doing this, the auditor can then draw accurate and factual conclusions. Mm -hmm.